Welcome back. In today's session, we will start off with budgeting. Now, what exactly do you mean by a budget? A budget is a plan for the future and that plan should be in monetary terms. So a budget is a financial plan for the future. In budgeting, we need to know the meaning of three terms. One is the fixed budget. The second one is the flexible budget. And the third one is the flexed budget. Now, in order to understand the meaning of these budgets, let us take a very simple example. Suppose you are a toy manufacturer, okay? And you have certain salespeople to whom you are paying a fixed commission and also a variable commission. That is a commission based on the units that they sell. Now, suppose that your budgeted sales of the toy car is 100 units, okay? And the commission that you pay to the salesperson is $100 fixed plus a variable amount of $2 per unit. So if you are selling 100 units, what is the commission due to the salesperson? It is $100 fixed plus $2 per unit for 100 units. So it is 2 into 100. So 100 plus 200, which gives an amount of $300. Now, this is the budget that you have prepared. Now, suppose when the actual results come, the sales achieved is just 50 units. So what is the commission that you pay to the salesperson? It is $100 fixed plus 50 units multiplied by $2 per unit. So it is an amount of $200. Now, while analyzing the variances, that is the difference between the budgets and the actuals, can you say that you have made a savings of $100, that is 300 minus 200? Can you say that? Absolutely not. It is not a savings. It is just that the units have reduced from 100 to 50. That is why we have got a reduction in cost. So it is not meaningful to compare the actual results with the budgets of some other activity level. In this case, the activity level that has been budgeted is for 100 units, but the actual results is only for 50 units. So such kind of budgets where the budgets are fixed are suited only for companies operating in a stable environment. That is, they do not have violent fluctuations in sales. And these budgets are known as the fixed budget. So what is a fixed budget? A fixed budget are budgets which are set to a fixed amount and it is suited for companies operating in a stable environment. And the expenses are not grouped into fixed and variable expenses here. Now, what do we do for those companies which are not operating in a stable environment? It is for those companies that we use the flexible budgets. Let's take a look. So the facts of the case are same. We have a budgeted sales of 100 units, and the salesperson is given a variable commission of dollar two per unit and a fixed commission of dollar hundred. So let's make a note of it. For hundred units, what is a variable commission? It will be two into hundred or two hundred dollar, and fixed commission was hundred dollar. Now coming to the actuals. The actual sales is just fifty units. So what is the commission that you pay? It is dollar two into 50 or hundred dollar and the fixed commission remains the same at hundred dollar. If you had noticed this budget has distinguished between the variable commission and the fixed commission. So it is very easy to modify the budget to the actual activity level. Now what is the actual activity level? It is 50 unit. So what is the budget that is to be prepared if the units were 50 units? This is what we are going to prepare now, and it is known as the flexed budget. So flexed budget is always prepared for the actual activity level for comparison purposes. So it is for 50 units. If we had prepared the original budget for 50 units, what would the amount be? The variable commission would be 50 units into $2 or $100, and the fixed commission never changes. So it is $100. So this would have been the budget had we budgeted for 50 units. Now it is correct to make a comparison between the actuals and the flexed budget. It is more meaningful. But in the fixed budget, we had a variance wherein we get the impression that we have a savings there. But here the comparison is accurate. 
the actual results of 50 units is getting compared to the budgets for 50 units. And the budget that you have prepared at the beginning of the year, which can be modified to a different activity level, is known as the flexible budget. So what is a flexible budget? It is a budget which is prepared by classifying the expenses into fixed and variable portion at the beginning of the budgeting period. It can be varied according to the changing needs of a company. That is, if our actual results differ from the budget, we can immediately change the budget because we know what is the fixed expense and what is the variable expense. Now, what is a flexed budget? A flexed budget is something that you prepare for the actual activity level. So it is a budget which is prepared for the actual activity level at the end of the budget period. For the flexible budget, it was at the beginning of the budgeting period. So I hope the distinction between the fixed budget, flexible budget and flexed budget is clear for you guys. Now let's bring in certain variances also into the question. What are the variances that we studied? Direct material variance, direct labor variance, variable overhead variance, fixed overhead variance, and the sales variances. Now, the first three, that's the direct material, direct labor, and variable overheads are not very tricky. So I'm assuming that there are no variances for this in the upcoming example. The only variance that I'm going to create is for the sales variance and for the fixed overhead variance, which is a little bit tricky so that you will get the complete picture of how the variance and the budgets are connected. Let's take a look. So we have the product that we are manufacturing, the toy car, and the per unit selling price and the cost details of the product are given below. If you notice here, there is the selling price per unit, direct material cost per unit, direct labor cost per unit, variable overhead cost per unit, and fixed overhead costs per unit. Whenever you see the term fixed overhead costs per unit, immediately put in your mind that this is absorption costing because only in absorption costing, we calculate fixed overhead costs per unit or the OAR. So now we know that this is absorption costing. So suppose the budgeted units is 100 units. So what will be the budgeted figures? It will be 20 into 100 will be the sales value. $2 into 100 units will be the direct material cost. $2 into 100 units will be the direct labor cost. $2 into 100 units will be the variable overhead cost. And $10 into 100 units will be the fixed overhead budgeted. Please note that $1,000 is the total fixed overhead that has been budgeted and they have already converted into a per unit figure by dividing by the number of budgeted units. That is how they got $10 per unit. Now coming to the actuals. The actual sales achieved was just 50 units and I have not changed the direct material cost, direct labor cost and variable overhead cost actually incurred. I have kept that same so that that variance will be zero for those three variances. The only thing that I have changed is the selling price per unit actual is just $1.15 per unit. So what is the total actual figures? Sales value is $15 per unit multiplied by 50 units, you get $750. Likewise for direct material cost, it is $2 into 50 units, that is $100. And for direct labor, it is $2 multiplied by 50 units, $100 again. Variable overheads, $2 multiplied by 50 units, again $100. And the fixed overheads, we have assumed that there is no change in the fixed overheads. Suppose this fixed overheads that we have budgeted is a factory rent. We have just assumed that the factory rent has not changed and the actual payment is also exactly $1,000. Now we have the budgets for 100 units and we have the actuals for 50 units. So what is it that we have to prepare? We have to flex the budget to the actual activity level. So let's prepare the flexed budget and it will be for the actual activity level of 50 units. Now how is the flexed budget prepared? It is fairly simple. 
instead of budgeting for 100 units, we are budgeting for 50 units. That's the only difference. So what are the budgeted figures? For one unit, it is $20. So 50 units, it is 20 into 50. Likewise, you do 2 into 50 for direct material, 2 into 50 for direct labor, and so on. So let's jot down the figures. It is 20 into 50. That's the sales value budgeted, $1,000. 2 into 50, that's $100. It's 2 into 50, that's $100 for the direct material. It's 2 into 50, $100 for the direct labor. And 2 into 50, that's $100 for the variable overheads as well. And please note that fixed overheads will also be flexed. That is, they will take $10 into 50 units. The fixed overheads will be budgeted only for $500. So this is the peculiarity of absorption costing. In absorption costing, we flex the fixed overheads also. So what is the fixed overheads in the flexed budget? It is just 10 into 50 or $500. And the difference that arises is nothing but the fixed overhead volume variance. Now, before proceeding with this question, if at all you are not thorough with the five basic variances that have already been taught, I request you to watch those five videos and then come and attend this class. If you're very lazy, you can skip the direct material, direct labor variable overheads for the time being because the variance is zero in this particular question. At least go and look the fixed overhead variances and the sales variances. Only then you will be able to understand this example. So now we can start off with the variance analysis by comparing the actuals with the flexed budget. So the first item, that's the sales. So what are we comparing? $750 is the actual sales and the sales as per flexed budget is $1,000. So what is the reason for this difference? The reason for this difference is nothing but we have sold the goods at only $15 per unit when it was budgeted at $20 per unit. So we calculate the sales price variance. And what is the formula for sales price variance? It is actual selling price minus budgeted selling price into the actual unit sold. So what is the actual selling price? It's 15. What is the budgeted selling price? It's 20. And the actual unit sold is 50. Substituting those figures in the formula, we get 15 minus 20 into 50. And since the result is negative, it is an adverse variance of $250 because we have sold at a price lesser than the budget. So we can note down the first variance. The reason for this difference, that is the 1,750, is because of the sales price variance of 250 and it is an adverse variance. Now we have safely assumed that the variance of the direct material, direct labor and variable overheads is zero, just to make that question simple. So I'm just noting it down. The direct material variance is zero, direct labor variance is zero, variable overhead variance is also zero. And what about the fixed overhead variance? What is it related to? That is nothing but the fixed overhead volume variance. And what was the formula? It is actual units produced minus budgeted units produced multiplied by OAR per unit. In this particular example, we will assume that the production is equal to sales. That is, there are no stocks. So what is the actual units produced? Actual units produced is 50 units. And what was the budgeted units? It was 100 units. And what is the OAR per unit? That is nothing but the fixed overhead cost per unit of $10. So substituting those figures in the formula, we get 50 minus 100 into 10, and it is an adverse variance because we have produced a lesser quantity. So let's make note of that variance. Fixed overhead volume variance is 500 adverse. Now, just for your information, fixed overhead expenditure variance will be zero because the formula is budgeted fixed overheads minus actual fixed overheads. That's zero. That is why I'm not writing fixed overhead expenditure variance. What is the total of all these variances? It is 250 plus 500 giving an amount of 750 adverse. Now, what is this 750 adverse? It is a difference between the flexed budget and the actual. 
but the management is not interested to know the difference between the flex budget and the actual. What they are going to see is the budget for the year is $400 profit and the actual is 550 loss. So they will ask you what went wrong. So are you going to say that 750 adverse, one is because of sales price variance and the other one is because of fixed overhead volume variance. They will still ask you what is this difference of $200? There is also a variance for that, right? So what is the variance connected to that? That is nothing but the sales volume variance and it is given by the formula actual units sold minus the budgeted units sold multiplied by standard profit per unit. Please note the words standard profit per unit. So what is the actual unit sold? Actual unit sold is 50. Budgeted unit sold is 100. And the standard profit is dollar four per unit. Substituting the figures in the formula, we get 50 minus 100 into four, that's equal to 200 adverse because we have sold a lesser quantity. Now I told you while explaining the sales volume variance in absorption costing, we always multiply with the standard profit per unit. And the reason is because fixed overheads is calculated as a per unit figure or we flex the fixed overheads as well. That is the reason why under absorption costing for the sales volume variance, you multiply it with the standard profit per unit. So now we have got an explanation for all the variances. The budgeted profit was $400. The actual profit is not a profit, but a loss of $550. So what are the reasons for this variance? First reason is we have sold at a lower price resulting in the loss of $250. And what is the second reason? Instead of selling 100 units, we have sold just 50 units, which means that our profit has reduced because of that reason, which is analyzed under two heads. One is the fixed overhead volume variance and the other one is the sales volume variance, both having an adverse of $500 and $200. Now, if you show this sheet to the management, they will go mad. So you will have to consolidate it and prepare it beautifully. And the statement that you present to the top management stating what the variances are or what are the reasons for the difference between the budgeted profit and the actual profit is known as the operating statement. So right now we are preparing the operating statement under absorption costing. So let's get to the definition first. Operating statement is a top level variance report reconciling the budgeted and the actual profit. So I'll just copy what we have just done. So the reasons for the variances are three. Now let's write the operating statement. It starts with the budgeted gross profit. So what is a budgeted gross profit? It is $400. And from that you have to adjust all the variances, okay, to arrive at the actual profit. And the first variance that you have to adjust is the sales volume variance. So you adjust the sales volume profit variance. I'm marking it as profit variance because it is absorption costing where you're multiplying with the standard profit. So it is known by the name sales volume profit variance. And what is sales volume profit variance? It is 200 adverse. So we adjust that and the resulting figure is the balance profit on actual sales. That's 400 minus 200, we get $200 as the balance profit. And what do you mean by this balance profit on actual sales? It is nothing but the profit of the flexed budget. That is $200. So it exactly matches with the flexed budget profit. So our operating statement is right. Now coming to the next variance that we are going to adjust is the sales price variance. And what is the sales price variance? It is $250 adverse. So adjusting that, we get the resulting profit. It's not a profit. It's a loss of $50. Now we adjust all the cost variances and we group it into the adverse and the favorable variance. And what are the cost variances? Direct material variance should be grouped into the price and the usage and direct labor variance, which should be grouped into the rate and the efficiency, the variable overhead variance, which should be grouped into the expenditure and the efficiency, fixed overhead expenditure variance, and last fixed overhead 
volume variance. And in this particular example, the first four are zero. So we are not going to write anything there, but we have a figure for fixed overhead volume variance at 500 adverse. So I'm going to key in that figure and taking this figure to the outer column again, it is $500 adverse. Now we get to the actual profit that is 50, that's loss. Again, we have to adjust 500, that's also an adverse. So 50 loss, add an adverse variance of 500. If it's a favorable, you would have reduced. Now it's an adverse, so we have to add to the loss. So it is 550 loss, which is exactly matching with the actual profit. Now, this is the statement that we give to the top management. So in one shot, they can understand where things have gone wrong. From this, we understand that we have sold the goods at a reduced selling price. From sales volume, profit variance, and fixed overhead volume variance, we know that we have not achieved the target volume of sales. So in order to get a complete picture of the organization, the preparation of the operating statement is mandatory. Now, since the absorption costing method is over, there is just one more method left, the marginal costing method. Now, the main difference between the absorption costing and the marginal costing method is that in the absorption costing, we calculate the fixed overhead cost per unit and we flex the fixed overhead also based on the actual activity level. But in marginal costing, we never calculate the fixed overhead cost per unit and we never flex the fixed overhead cost also. So let's take a look at what the differences are between the absorption costing method and the marginal costing method. Now, this was the sheet that we prepared under absorption costing where we had three variances, but in marginal costing, we have a difference. We never calculate the fixed overhead cost per unit and we never flex the fixed overheads also. Whatever figure is given in the original budget will be copied to the flexed budget also under marginal costing because under marginal costing, we never link the fixed overheads to the units. The fixed overheads is treated as a period cost. That is, it is related to the particular period. It is not related to the number of units. That's fairly simple for us also. So we will just look at the modifications. So instead of $500, that is instead of flexing it, under marginal costing, it will be the very same figure that is written. That is $1,000 here in the original budget and $1,000 here in the flexed budget as well. So, which means that we will not have a volume variance simply because we are not flexing the fixed overheads based on the number of units actually sold. So, that's the first difference. So, we don't have a fixed overhead volume variance. So, I'm striking it out. Now, since the fixed overheads has changed, the profit as per flexed budget will also change. So the revised profit will be sales $1,000 minus expense of $1,300. So we end up with a loss of $300. Now coming to the difference between the profit as per the original budget and the profit as per the flexed budget. That is explained by the sales volume variance. And please note, since we are not flexing the fixed overheads under marginal costing, we cannot take the standard profit per unit. Only if the fixed overheads are flexed, we can multiply it with the standard profit per unit. So here we can multiply only with the standard contribution per unit. Selling price is 20, so it's 20 minus variable cost is 2 plus 2 plus 2, that is minus 6. So we get a standard contribution of $14. Now substituting the other figures in the formula, we have actual units sold at 50 units, budgeted units sold at 100 units, and standard contribution, we have just found that it is $14 per unit. So the answer is 50 minus 100 into 14, giving an amount of 700 adverse. Now coming to the operating statement under marginal costing. It is very similar to the absorption costing method except for certain modifications. So we will just get to the modifications. So it is a sales volume contribution variance that will come here. In absorption costing, it was a sales volume profit variance and fixed overhead volume variance will never come for marginal costing. So these are the only differences that you have to keep in mind. So now let's copy the figures that we've already found out. 
So we have the budgeted gross profit at $400. So keying in the figure of $400. Sales volume contribution variance is 700 adverse. So I'm writing that figure. So you have the budgeted profit on actual sales as 400 minus 700, giving a profit of negative 300. And this amount should exactly match with the flexed budget profit. Now coming to sales price variance, there's no change. It's 250 adverse and the resulting figure is negative 550. Now adjusting the cost variances, all the cost variances are zero in this particular example. So we don't have any variances there and the actual profit is negative 550 since we don't need to adjust any variances here. Now I request the students to go through this video once again, wherein you will have a complete understanding of how an operating statement is prepared under absorption costing method and under the marginal costing method. Now many a time I have seen that students just mug up the formulas of standard costing. They do not have any idea as to how it is getting affected in the budgets, where to look for in the budget. So I want you guys to have a clear cut idea of the relationship between the variances and the budget so that even if the question is twisted, you guys will still be able to answer it. So thank you for watching and have a great day.